in the last 20 minutes. Um, for those of you who don't know, who aren't in the Discord, which of course you should be, patreon.com slash Direction, five bucks a month gets you in the Discord. Uh, someone on the Fedora Lounge recently posted um, uh, high-res images of basically all the Esquire illustrations from, what, 1933 to 1947? Something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Something like that. Uh, and so at least Ethan and I have been going through that for the past couple days. Have you guys been splitting the workload? Like, one's working from the bottom, one's No, the it's top. only me who's well, been saying One putting it in their face. We, it doesn't, yeah, it's going to be tough with two people because there's going to be a lot of duplicates. Well, no, uh, sure. no so we, what I'm saying is because because we can't copy and paste them individually into the album, we have to download them all. So technically, you could do it each decade, and then we could just make the albums. I could do the 40s if you haven't already I'm, had that I'm one. already starting. I, I'd be you happy could, to do you the could start. You could start in the 50s. I think it's every at Parallel Arts. Oh wow! Okay, like, but yeah. Like, anyway, like, like every like parallel arts issue. Something. Yeah, until like. Yeah. Um, something. And we've talked about we've talked about these before. Yeah. Um, we love them. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> Good. People. But anyway, we're gonna look at them now, and we're just gonna we're gonna make some comments on them. Are you live right now, Ethan? No, hold on. I'm just on Instagram on. or on Discord. I mean, I'm moving it over. I don't know if his internet can handle. I'm taking out my sunglasses. Okay, here okay. we go. Yeah, boy. Sure we are. So these are the ones from the 1930s. That's right. These yeah, are the ones that I've done. Those are really interesting. Uh, so, yeah, let's take a look at this. Uh, I can read off this this copy. It says here, the double-breasted... Basically, this is about promoting the guard's coat. The double-breasted guard's coat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's it looks good. It's like the classic length. It looks cut really close to the body, which is, you know, early 30s, right? You have a... It's supposed to be, um, you know, it's very fitted in the, in the early 30s. It's a lot, it's a lot, like a slimmer? Not slimmer is not the right word, but, you know. Hold on, people in the it's chat are a, saying, uh, like, let's see how many minorities they feature. Uh, the answer is not none, because they do have minorities, but they're all servants. Yeah, I was just going to say, is it worse that they, uh, they yeah, have them as servants or not having worse. any minorities <laughs> yeah. visible, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, here, okay, so I know that Spencer and I talk a lot about, and, you know, and, and, um, and, uh, 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 Ivan, you know, we all love, like, Spirit Point Collars and everything, but, obviously, that wasn't the only collar at the mm -hmm. time. You got this, like, club collar here, which I think has eyelet holes for, uh, for, like, collar. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Uh, yeah, very short, a very short collar. So this is, uh, what is this, 1933, so still, you know, some holdovers mm -hmm. from the 20s there. And, you know, people call this about the golden era of menswear. The more and more I look at this, the more, to me, golden era just means, like, there was so much here that... So much variety. So much variety, yeah, because it's, it's like, you know, like, all, like, sportswear was tailoring, right? Like, this is, like, this is, like, casual sportswear. This is, like, sport, you know, sporting clothes. And he's wearing fucking jodhpurs with this, like, riding jacket. And look at that, like, pockets. that, like, zip cardigan right there. That is yeah. so cool. With I'd love to see one oh, of those. Yeah, I see those pop up on eBay sometimes. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, zip cardigans were around, you know, for, like, the 60s and stuff, too, right? Like, and, and, and everything, mm -hmm. but then... I mean, that's what we were talking about this last night, but you see so many things in these old Esquire scans. People assume, like, things like crepe soles, penny loafers, OCBDs, all stuff like that, you know, was super popular in the 50s and 60s. But you see these in, like, the early 30s. You see people wearing, like, penny loafers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah also, one thing I noticed, too, is that, like, you know, knee-length coats. I thought that, that actually that most coats were longer, you know, but this is just knee-length right here. That's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Um, I also want to point out that these, these suspenders right here, I love this. Like the mm -hmm. kind of like the individual oh, yeah. loops, instead of like the U loops that we normally mm -hmm. see. The, what, do, what do they call those? The Y? Yeah, instead of the, the U? Y. Yeah, I love that. These look way better than regular suspenders. Yeah, a lot, the, a lot cleaner. What's the little strap coming off of the sides of them? I have no idea what that is i have no idea yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm that, i mean there are like weird well. suspenders from like the like 20s and 30s that feature like i mean yeah i don't know what those are but um like double rl makes a 
like a version of some weird like twenty suspenders. Yeah, I think they have like two extra like, clip-on things. Yeah, hmm. interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to read this, but I don't think it actually because sometimes they don't even tell you, like you know, because maybe they assume that you know what it is or whatever. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, you figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, lo- this is like one of the best jackets of all time. Look at this. Look oh this yeah, here. three roll two like flapped patch bellows pockets. Yeah. Again, yeah. we yeah. talk about this all the time on the podcast. All the time on the stream. Okay. Back in the day when people just wore, like, quote-unquote, tailoring all the time, there was so much ver- more variety in tailoring. Absolutely. Um, which is what I think Ethan and I are interested in. Uh, David says, and again, keep the sides of the shirt from poofing out. Oh, maybe it, like, straps to you or something, so it doesn't, like... Yeah. Mm. And then you can see in the illustration right there, another thing I've talked about all the stream, all the time oh, on right the here. podcast and stream. Right here. Um, the deep V on the sweater, which you will oh. see all the time. Yeah, I think. Well, no, I think V's uh, like the V's on V-neck sweaters are too short now. They just like show the t- the collar and the tie knot, and that's basically it. But it I like it when they would end. show a lot more of the shirt. And and one thing interesting too is that you know we we like we talk about like rubato with like very wide ribbing, but obviously there was still thin ribbed sweaters back in the day. <laughs> so not everything like there are some there are some details that make things appear vintage, but in the '30s, like like we said. There's so much variety. Like, oh, they didn't yeah. wear dark, like, you know, everyone thinks about like the dark colored, like, H&M shirt you wear. Like, yeah, clearly right here, dark blue poplin shirt right here. You know, it's. And I mean, again, I talked about this on the Discord. When you look, scroll through this, you'll see that, like, like, so, like the, the combination of light suit, dark shirt, and light tie was seemed to be so popular in the 30s. But you never see people reference that in period pieces or even like vintage guys dress like that. But for whatever reason, that was so popular then. I'm going to read some of this copy. It says here, the Lovett jacket has three buttons and expansion pockets. The buttons are hand cut stag horn or leather and the pockets are spacious. No, the pockets are capacious enough to afford ample parking space for bulky objects like your tobacco pouch and things like that. Parking space. Um, I love and then, that. And then, yeah, the sweater is Shetland. So that's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, right here, you know, gray herringbone double breasted suit with like kind of a pagoda shoulder. <laughs> horizontal. Horizontal striped shirt. Club collar right there. Yeah. Tie pin. And with a pocket, lapel pin. And no cuffs. And again, like horizontal. No cuffs. Yeah, horizontal, horizontal striped no shirt. Or something I really associate Sweet. with like the 50s and 60s. Yeah. But again, here you see it like 20 years earlier. Yeah, exactly. It's it's pretty crazy. There are no uh, new ideas. Exactly. Yeah, it says here, a plain shoe in black or briar brown with a deep reddish cast. A simple plain toe cap with no punching or pinking. A demi, bu- demi bosom shirt with cross stripes. I don't know what a demi <laughs> bosom stripe shirt is or whatever. Is that like, like a contrast placket or something maybe maybe that could be it um yeah i love how here you see like 30s short collars yeah yeah yeah. so again like not everything was fair point (laughs) yeah rep stripe shirts um and here yeah you got the cuffs the turnips here and i like how it calls out yeah the racetrack suit can enter the office so people back then yeah like and something i mentioned in the in the discord is that like we talk about hashtag menswear this was like the Esquire man. Like this was like that, like that fashionable guy. And I, I'm, there was like a illustration. There's like a cartoon of like a guy wearing like a check jacket with like cream trousers, like striped shirt and like foulard tie. And one of the guy, one of the caption, like the caption is, I bet you read Esquire, huh? And I think that that's so <laughs> good. I wish I, I wish I knew where it was. Cause I love that illustration, but it's, it's kind of proof that, yeah, maybe not everyone dressed like this, just like how not everyone dressed in hashtag menswear, but like clearly they were this was the hashtag mentor of the 30s yeah yeah this is like you know scrolling through uh, how to talk to girls at parties or whatever you know this is, this is it <laughs> this illustration was like this was one of my favorites i don't know why but like in, when i started first started working at that tuxedo stand in macy's or whatever yeah i would just look at this one and be like oh that's it like that looks so clean i mean yeah, it's right just it's the perfect shaded navy yeah, yeah navy yeah. blue contrast collar shirt with like a geometric like dark navy or black tie black Mm -hmm. it's really good the white it says white pk collar don't know if that's actually yeah that's actually real because sometimes they just say and so again this is like you know this is lawyering so this is when they were a little bit more uh toned down 
Yeah. See, it's kind of like proof yeah. of where all these all these conventions about like what's casual and what wasn't uh, is like a very like l- like sixties kind of thing. I think it comes it comes later because mm. people still wore you know foulard ties and and you know double breasted suit or double breasted odd jackets to the office and everything. At least at least that's what Esquire was telling you to do. I don't know exactly yeah. again if it was in public because there's not a, there's not a lot of photographs. Um, Here we oh, get oh, gray oh, overcoat with blue suit. Looks great. Yeah, great. Hey, bl- red, blue striped shirt with uh, with red tie. You know, again, like I said this in Discord too, but like, I think a lot of these ideas aren't that bad. Yeah, it's, I, I still wouldn't do the shoulder padding, but like, I think that like, you know, the low gorge with a soft shoulder and the, these combinations, I think are pretty timeless. Um, mm. Would you do the bowler hat? No. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> what about a boater? This next look was also one of the ones that I like definitely was like when I get a custom suit, this is what it's gonna look like. Yeah. This is definitely early thirties. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah, this kind of like like I don't know, yeah, it's like got like a highish buttoning point, you know? It's like right in the middle here. Kind of an interesting mm-hmm. lapel. You know, it's kind of like fashion forward. I love this. Dedicated to the man who says he can't wear brown. I love that. It's very like, fuck <laughs> you. I, you can wear brown, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> Once again, like in the 30s, people are having debates like, oh, I could never yeah. wear this brown suit and, into the office. And then the, and then the style writer says, today. no, yes, you can't, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, more, more, ba- more, this is like very conservative, you know? It's, it's this is uh, like a classic Esquire look. The striped suit, striped shirt. Yeah, boutonniere well, and then of course polka dot tie yeah see like this is what i talk about wearing triple pattern mixing or wearing like a striped shirt with a pattern tie like it's yeah in my head it's very esquire you know and how about the uh, the sportswear over there you got like long sleeve tee white shorts white like i don't know deck shoes whatever he's wearing or even white bucks yeah um the thing that was cool about this like the like i had seen a lot of these you know um, but there are so many illustrations of like workwear or Western wear uh, that I had never seen before um, that this guy posted on the Fedora Lounge. So thank you to that guy. Oh yeah, here's another suit that I definitely had saved, thinking this is one of the the, the Grail suits. Look at the is. the lapels on the double breasted yeah. vest. Yeah, look, and look at, at the the braces on the side. Those are really <laughs> those cool. Those are those are interesting. Love the uh, like you know these solid colored shirts in the kind of semi like there's like a point collar not really it's slightly spear point, but uh, yeah and then the uh, contrast collar with like a peach like a peach yellow shirt you know or yeah yellow the like, overcoat too yeah overcoat great thirties I call these deco stripe ties just because they're just vintagey and you know these kind of like. You know, these stripes with designs inside of it on the jacquard silk is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of, like, English inspiration here. Like, you know, American interpretation of what, like, English businessmen would wear or something, you know. Yeah. And lots of, you know, lots of Homburgs and bowler hats. Suits that approximate the ideas of a stroller suit, you know, like the club collars and the contrast collars and everything. I mean, you especially see this in these, like, earlier illustrations from, like, 1933 and 1934. Here we go. Near the end of the decade, it gets a little bit more casual, I think. Yeah. This is, yeah, again, really cool. Bellow. Yeah, bellow. Black pockets. Yeah, great lapels. Look at that. Look at this, like, blunted, wide, but shallow notch. You know, it's not a sharp opening. It's not super cut deep, like, in the 70s or Spear McKay style. Another thing Spencer says here, right, like, I mean, not really light colored jacket, but dark, um, dark, dark suit, like dark light shirt. sweater, like just contrast, yeah, like yeah, contrast. big contrast, like that. Yeah, I think cool. you saw a lot more. Cool weave also on the uh, on the sweater. Yeah, also right the here. the shape of the flat cap is like really wide. Yeah, it's very exaggerated. Uh, it says here, um, this is a roomy polo coat. I think maybe. Oh, it's 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 this coat that's right here in the background. I guess. Uh, okay, so here's some collegiate style from 1933. Um, it's very, yeah, on every campus, Joe College goes nonchalant again. Hey, they're talking about slouch all the way back then, baby, you know? Look at that perfect back on the jacket, the green one. Yeah, this uh, non, non-action non back. Shirt yoke. Yeah, the, the, uh, I guess it's like an action back, but it's not, it's, it's a shirt yoke and not a bice wing. 
uh, which is a little bit different. Um, you can see, yeah, even then, uh, OCBDs mainly being worn by collegiate students, although later on you'll see it uh, worn by, you know, adult guys. But, yeah, people, I don't get what people are like, oh, you can't wear that with a suit. Yeah, people fucking did wear it with suits. They wore it with suits all the time. It was, uh, you know, herringbone suits and tweed suits, but it still, it still counted. You can also see the, uh, the square and knit ties, very collegiate for the 30s as well. Spencer, are you dead? Oh, I think... Spencer, I'm no. I'm not dead, right? Like, I'm still here. No, you're fine. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good. Spencer. Spencer. Yeah. Um, let's see if there's anything here. It says, oh, the, re the top coat is reversible gabardine, which is pretty cool. Tweed. Oh, so it's tweed on the inside and gab on the outside. Oh, That's just interesting, because usually people would do it, wear it the other way around. I know. Mm-hmm. Spencer, I yeah. see you're trying to talk, but no one can hear you. Oh, hold, well, oh, no. no, no he, he, he stepped he away. Gone. Yeah, I, just, I came back in. That was the sound of my door opening. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, creepy. Yeah, I really this want to like plus for current... ice skating. Yeah, this is crazy. But I this is like the current vibe for me, like kind of vaguely European sports wear berets with sport coats. Again, he's got this like Norfolk style, you know, belted with these uh, like – map pockets i guess like those side like those like mm -hmm. vertical pockets and then you got these fun like jacquard kind of gingham check. yeah gingham uh smart and warm for all year sports you know long wool hose <laughs> that's what that is <laughs> and then of course you get a lot of evening wear white tie, white tie yep. tails that's, that's, I think that's I am. our first person of color we've seen and they're probably a servant <laughs> Yeah, not Why good. Why do they draw the eyes not like that? Good. It's uh, the answer is racism. The answer is racism. Right? Yeah, it's one hundred percent. The answer is racism. Yeah, this Pretty is uh, this is bad. This <laughs> Once is again, not not good, dude. Like, come on, back but, then. But uh, I mean, come on, gray shirt or gray suit, brown hat, brown shoes. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Just... I do like the uh, or the brown dark, gray dark suit. Shirt. The dark, uh, dark shirt. I don't know if it's chambray. Let's find out. Um, uh, crown hat. I doubt here, it. Snap brim. Uh, don't see anything here. About the shirt. I like this. It says here, we included the corner cigar store too, just to keep our fashion consciousness from getting too uppity. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Uh, yeah. Another great belted, but this is a belted like sport coat. It's not even a Norfolk style. It's just a regular belted, like. Yeah, just I like love how he belt put his gloves coat. into his yeah. belt. That's, That's kind of cool. cool. That's pretty. That's cool. awesome. You know, I did you know, that with yeah. my overcoat. I mean, this was like I don't know, like just thinking about the situations that it's it's very like you know Ralph Lauren lifestyle. Like, wouldn't you like to be the guy who went skiing the and then guy. stopped at like an Alpine like cocktail lounge? Yeah. In the middle of skiing. That sounds great, right? Yeah. Lo also, look at the long sleeve polo here. Very cool. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, knitted woolen gloves. A muffler. In which, <clears throat> bright, in which item bright colorings are to be encouraged? So, yeah. Jaunty scars, baby. You know? It's, uh, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> more. What the fuck is this? The shoe? Yeah. The yeah, there are some weird shoes. As I pointed out in the Discord, there's like... There was like one shoe that I saw that was like this weird kind of like not closure thing. Yeah. Let, let me read, let me read this. There were, yeah. It says here a heavier type of shoe than commonly went to business is both permissible and advisable with this outfit. But even if the usual street shoe is worn, ample protection is afforded by the lumberman's overshoe. Sketched at the left, which has recently, and for no particular reason, acquired a halo of swank. So it's like, these are trending. Let's include them right here. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah. So uh, in 1934 or whatever, these shoes were trendy. Yeah, these overshoes, which you wear over <laughs> your other shoes. Crazy. Also, yeah, pa look at that flap like breast pocket right here. Mm -hmm. That's cool. The uh, more matching. alpine fits here. Wish yeah. we could see more details, but it's like a double-breasted, um, like. Oh, there's. Jacket. I think there's another. Like, there's another illustration that shows a jacket very similar to that later. Um, yeah. But I. Was, yeah, but that one's really, really cool. I do more I polka do dot. Love 
uh, the socks worn high. Over the scarves the that seemed to be very in vogue in the mid thirties. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love this green suit. This like foresty-ish kind of green. Uh, what what seeing all these is, is, is kind of showing me is I kind of want a Tyrolean hat. I kind of kind of dig it. Uh, <laughs> you want a Tyrolean hat? Yeah, it's it's. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of cool. Uh, here you got this yeah, yeah. morning dress ish kind of or stroller suit kind of a thing going on mm-hmm. here. Um, yeah, casually reading in a cool outfit that's like fucking accents your hips and waist so much. Like it's just it's like skin right mm-hmm. here on this guy. And those jackets do not uh, look nearly so as short as, um, like, you know, a lot of other, like, early 30s things you've seen. That's a much more classic length. Oh, baby. Oh, there you get a suede leather jacket. That's yeah. cool. I love, oh, yeah, see, I love the too. Esquire, like, casual illustrations, which you don't see as much of. Well, especially these, like, color photographs. Because, I mean, you know, we, we see vintage clothing, but that's the same of... <laughs> You know that it doesn't look the same as what they oh, look, look like they brand got, new. They got fucking, so like, seeing these, here. yeah. So seeing these like incredibly, I think those I know, these, like, high res no. like color photos, yeah. just really cool. Yeah. Damn, round collar attached shirt. Because before, right, you still had some dis- uh, detachables. Whoa, hey, yeah. a button, hey, it's a button down collar right here. Unknown uh, collar, and then you got the Royal Artillery tie, which I think Drake still sells. I think so, yeah. Aldris got one of those on our trip to New York. Very good choice. Really cool tie. Oh, it's stuck just getting the loading wheel. Did my internet die? Am I still live on Twitch? Can someone tell me? You're still live, I think. I have a green light. You're still live for me. Yeah, you're still live. You're scrolling again. No, no but on, on Twitch. Oh, yeah. you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good okay. Okay. Another unfortunate, uh, unfortunate oh, wait. display of person of color. Screen's frozen, but no, you're good. You're good. I think. I think it's just freezing a little bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Look at this. Uh. Great. Uh. Great. Again, the white dinner. The, the high armholes on the jacket. Yeah. With a red pocket square too. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice touch, especially with just like just getting the loading wheel. This overcoat is crazy. I'm still seeing this. I think we're good. Yeah, another thing that was super in vogue in the '30s, I think, was like uh, uh, big herringbone. Um, I mean, I have a like a like large scale herringbone double breasted jacket from the '30s. Um, that I think is really cool, and I just yeah, I think that like people like that back in the day. Yeah. When was the last time you wore it? Good question. Uh, I've thought about like ripping out the shoulder padding and just wearing it oh, casually. Man. This is one of the most like the all time looks that like double breasted, presumably cotton suit or with the like pink, yeah. With pink like the pink polo shirt, just so good. Let me see. Let's see here. It says here, um, the French have a word for it, dégage, dégage. I don't know. It's a prevailing characteristic of the, of Riviera fashion. Hey, talk about Italian Riviera stuff. This was like uh, uh-huh. the original ones. Um, or like that that summer style. Yeah, it's a light tan gabardine suit. With a burgundy polo shirt. Oh, the polo shirt is silk and wool. That's interesting. Hey. Uh, Drake's just launched a uh, a silk polo shirt, as we know. There's the boutonniere, which is, you see that a lot in Esquire. I think if you take that away, uh, a lot of these looks would be just, yeah, very, very classic. You can still wear a lot of these today. Uh, I got this uh some thirties beach wear cool the drill. Yeah, the, like the fitted tee with the uh with like the, the mm-hmm. shorts here. Alright, let's finish off with this bad boy here, the the graphic dress chart. Oh here we go. Yeah. There's another one of those like yeah, khaki suits, khaki double breasted suits. 
Um, you had that one in, co- in cotton from Ralph Lauren, which I know it didn't work out, but that's still a really cool idea for a, sh- for a suit, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, of course, you got the, hey, we talked about it on Saturday. There it is again, the uh, uh, tennis sweater. Oh, yeah, down here. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. White tennis. And then you got, you got what I was talking about earlier, light suit, dark shirt, light tie. See, that was like such a prevailing look. But so you literally bad. like no, yeah. I don't like it very much, it's but so bad. Um, it seems it seems weird that it's never shown up in any period pieces, and I've never seen any vintage guy do that look. But like, because they know it, it seemed to be bad. so big in the thirties. They push that. Yeah, shit. yeah. It says here he's wearing a double-breasted gray flannel suit with the lapel rolled to the bottom button. Brown suede shoes on the town lap. No idea what that means. And then red jersey polo shirt with a white wool tie. Crazy. Red jersey shirt. Okay. Yeah. So like I could I could replicate this with my SJC like polo, my red polo yeah. that I have from them. What I yeah. what I don't what I think is cool is that you have this very Esquire look of like the brown check jacket with white pants and spectators right here. Um and then I really love the the summer beret look right here. Mm-hmm. Which is really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, black and white. Very like gold. Look. Yeah, this is a good one here too. You got this alpine look. Oh man, matching anorak suit. Mm-hmm. That's fucking cool. Skiing park. Does that have like a? Does that have like fur around the uh, around the hood? The one on the. Uh... Oh yeah. Uh, on the right. Yeah. Yeah, poplin. Yeah, but I mean, you got a, you got a lot of like the alpine looks that you you wrote about like what like a year ago, two years ago. Yeah, year. Yeah. Get a lot of the. Two thousand twenty. Yeah. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. This one's coat with like tights and high socks. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, and then here's the final page and i mean we're probably not gonna we're not gonna get to it tonight but it's like yeah it's like again as i said before you you keep scrolling and you see all these things that people assume you know these trends that didn't come until later but there they are in like 1933 like well if you if you look at this album and scroll far enough you'll see like sockless loafers being worn <laughs> you know in the mid 30s yeah. yep you'll see unbuttoned. so again nothing there is nothing new under the sun yeah, hmm. this is this is why this this no new ideas is so ever good. Mm-hmm. because uh, you can see it all here, but done with like full cut pants and and you know wide lapels, which is why I like this a lot. Um, yeah, this like evening wear post here. You know, you got the yeah polo coat over warm weather black tie. That's like a dream of mine to wear. It's fucking but cool, I know right? it's oh, stra- never gonna turn out like that. With the straw boater too, like that's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was another thing that you saw a lot in these Esquire mags is like you know uh, boaters being worn with uh, with tailoring, and I think it is really really hard to wear a boater today and not look costumey. But I still think like yeah, boater with a black band with like black tie looks pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do like here. I post. I think I saw this earlier posted somewhere else. But I thought, oh wait, is this black? And then this is like gray pants. Like that's an interesting kind of thing because I also saw a uh, a uh, black tie outfit where it's like a black dinner jacket with white pants and i thought that was kind mm-hmm. of a fun thing but so i was like oh here but no this is like that's black and then that's midnight blue which you can really yeah. see now when i when i when i'm able to see it in full in like a, a full high quality scan looks sick and then you got the very ethan outfit here well not really ethan but just something i like where it's like the waistcoat with a, yeah the very collegiate collegiate yeah with a ch- and again, there's a lot of collegiate looks in this one in uh, Esquire too. They were really concerned about what college kids were wearing. Also, yeah, hey, he's wearing I'm a, a college gray suit kid. with uh, black shoes. It says he's wearing black brogued shoes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, they're not just for like solid suits. You could wear them with with patterned suits back in the day. 